the plucky pop-up. I guess I'll talk about the plucky pop-up now since I'm going to be showing you the stuff. So kind of enabling, but my intro is about the pop-up. Here, here's my thing. I'd heard of Plucky, obviously. I've seen people talk about Plucky. Lots of podcasters talk about them. I was on their email list. I'd never seen it in person. It was kind of like I was joking all weekend that it was the unicorn that I was finally seeing in person. I had no clue the beast that is plucky like this is not just a unicorn people this is it's amazing their followers they're called plucksters they have a name i think now gosh watch me say that wrong plucksters i think they're called plucksters they i mean i had no idea it was such a thing like I knew Plucky Yarn was great just from hearing other people talk about it. That wasn't even me touching it. I had no idea the magnitude of the Plucky Knitter. So they, there's the Plucky Knitter, her name's Sarah. I met her, she's super sweet. Her sister's name is Haley, also super sweet. Haley was actually the first one that I met and she helped me kind of like direct me to some yarn because I had no idea what I was doing. They have so many bases. They have so many colors. Their color palette is just out of this world. Then I met Amy, who is customer service. Super cool as well. I mean, everybody was so nice. The people who go there are so nice. There was a chick from Great Britain. There's usually a chick from Australia that's there, but she didn't make it to this one. Australia people for, for this plucky pop up. I cannot believe that this event was two hours away from me and it was this cool. There was a couple there from Maryland who I met. They were so super nice. There was two gals, Joyce and Helen, hi, if you're watching, from Alabama. They were attorneys. Like, it was so awesome to meet people. Emma was probably my, I felt like she was my professor. She is from the Chicago area. She's been doing the plucky thing for a long time. And the reason I call her the professor is because she was schooling me the entire time. Any question I had, she had the answer. She knew the bases. She knew the colorways by looking at them. Like she was a wealth of knowledge. Funny story. When I first get there, not when I first get there. For, I went there Friday. I bought a sweaters quantity and a shawl. Yeah, I bought a sweater and a shawl worth of yarn Friday because I only had an hour to shop. Okay. Saturday... Uh, we went and had coffee. That's where I met Joyce and Helen. We knit a little bit in the coffee shop. Then I went to uh, H2, which they call like headquarters to because they dye all their yarn in a barn somewhere. And this is like their pretty, uh, not storefront because it's not open all the time, but it's a place where they can hold events and things. And it, it could be a storefront, it's gorgeous. Side note, Hastings is the cutest little town. I had no idea. There, there, there's just so many things that I wanna say about it. I went in on Saturday and I am looking for, I've told you guys, I told you guys, I told you, I told you guys. I'm not even done with one beer yet. I've told you guys before that I wanna knit the Susu pattern, so, 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 it's S-O-U-S, S-O-U-S, -S, Susu. And now I feel like a terrible person because I can't remember the designer's name. I, I'll put it down here. I was trying to figure out the yarn for it. I've been on the hunt for this, for yarn for this sweater for a long time. And I was kind of bouncing. I was talking to Joyce and Helen about it. And I wasn't really sure on the DK because the pattern calls for DK. I wasn't really sure on it. And Helen had mentioned maybe holding their solo base, which is fingering double. Oh, I was totally down for it. So I go, however, 
there's the maths, right? So I go in the back to, and the back of the place is where everybody was knitting and things. Like that's where everybody was like sitting down, stitching and bitching and visiting whatever. And I said, who's good at the maths? And everyone's like, Michelle, Michelle's good at the maths. She's a designer, she knows all that stuff. And I was like, okay, where's Michelle? <laughs> and they were like, I, I said, what does she look like? Can I find her? And some gal who was super sweet and I didn't get to like be introduced to her. I don't remember her name, but she's like, I'll show you. So she takes me up, introduces me to Michelle. I say, hi, thank you so much for helping. Go over the math thing, whatever. I figure it out. I go up to the register and I order a sweater's quantity because they didn't have it on hand. Um, so I placed my order and I they said it'd be about four weeks. So I don't have that to show you, but I do have the deep dish colorway, which is a completely another story, which is why this is gonna be a three hour long podcast. I'm so sorry. Later, like way later, like an hour later, right? I'm back sitting, knitting with people. And that's when I met Emma and, you know, figured out like how she's this like wealth of knowledge. And she's telling me about all the yarn and like kind of how the family, you know, because all the husbands were there, you guys, this is a total family affair. It's so, it's, it's just, it makes your heart happy. And it's how I see the, the fiber community, like just, it's how, it's what I love about the fiber community. You just felt so welcomed the whole time you were there. You never felt, I mean, these gals were busy. Everybody, their husbands were running the registers. I mean, they were busy and you never ever felt like they were busy. I mean, they, every, every time they spoke to you, it was truly genuine. It, it was just, it was awesome, high five to the plucky team. I'm talking to Emma and she's going, well, you know, Michelle Wang is, you know, one of their new designers, blah, or one of their, like, she's now their creative designer, I think, or something, I could be saying that wrong. But I was like, oh yeah, like I, I know who Michelle Wang is, like the, her, I know who Michelle Wang is, Michelle Wang's the, the Michelle that I was just talking to for 20 minutes about my yarn that 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 was Michelle Wang huh <laughs> I'm such a dumbass I have no idea you guys Michelle she then later came back and was like knitting with us she is so humble and so cool in person she actually uh moved from New York City to Nevada and we were talking about that. I I mean, just cool, cool people at this event. If you ever have the chance to go, highly suggest it. I now understand Plucky. And I don't think that I could if I hadn't attended this event. So now on to the, on to the hall. Okay. Uh... So this is the first night. These were their shopping bags that you got. Everything you bought came in these bags. They actually tried to give me one the second day and I was like, no, I only need one. You know, you can save it for someone else. So you got a pattern code for their shoot the moon kit. Well, or not kit, shoot the moon pattern. It's a pattern code for it. Then I am going to knit the Peking, which is P-E-K-I-N-G. I can't remember the designer. I'll put her down here. It'll be linked in the show notes. It's one of those things that have been in my queue forever and ever and ever. Again, I've been on the hunt for yarn. I wanted something drapey. I got three skeins. I, I hope the color shows up well. It's kind of like a steely blue. It's called Pure Michigan, which how fitting is that? And it's in their Traveler Sport base, 325 yards. It's 65 superwash merino, 20 mulberry silk, and 15 yak. It is so awesome. I cannot wait. It's gonna drape beautiful. I'm super excited. Now, it, I don't know when I'll be casting it on because there's so many things I wanna cast on. The next thing I got that night, I got these three. And these are 
different bases. These two are Traveler Sport, which same 65 2015 Merino Silk Yak. This one is Primo Sport, and it is 75 Superwash Merino, 20% Cashmere, 5% Nylon. So this is going to be a three color. Let me just tell you, this is called Early Light, which I don't know if you can tell is kind of a steely blue. Um, sketch, and this is the Quintessential Plucky Palette Summer Colorway Full Steam Ahead. Now, this will eventually be a three color shawl. I don't, probably way down the line. I do have to mention, any of you who perhaps have a three color shawl started or maybe have a three color shawl and are Speedy Gonzalez, but Paige the Framer, Paige, has a podcast, as does Elizabeth, who is just one N. They are co-hosting a knit along for a three color shawl. I missed the mark because I was doing my flamingo flavor so i knew that i wasn't going to get in but the deadline is june 15th so if any of you have one started or are very very fast knitters go over there and check those ladies out it is uh i believe that the entry the ravelry entry is on elizabeth's group so that's ju the just one end podcast you can probably find more information out over there the other thing that I bought, I know people hate crinkles, but I, I wanted to show you. They had these bags. They were just a hodgepodge. They were all different. I mean, some of them are hanked, some of them are wound. All it says is it goes by weight. This is 604 grams for 50 bucks. 604 grams of plucky. That's like six skeins of worsted weight yarn. So what I'm going to do, this one actually, this little bobble even has a tag. <clears throat> this is their snug worsted, but I don't know what any of the other stuff is. So, I mean, look at this, you guys. Talk about yarn piggery. <laughs> I just want it to be like this hodgepodgey, hodgepodge like I'm gonna I I was thinking um there is the snowbird which I can't remember the designer I'm so sorry I I was telling the girls there like I am not good at that game so I will find the snowbird and put the designer down here and of course you know I link everything but the snowbird like has outside pockets I thought, you know, like do a couple pockets in one color and maybe a sleeve in one. And so that will be, I'm, I'm picturing this as a sweater someday. Okay, that was Friday. Saturday is when I um, ordered my, where's my other one? Oh God, you guys, I forgot about this. Saturday nut to butt right like so busy i'm walking around plucky i have my coffee which was just dumb and i'm carrying this this skein of yarn okay this colorway i don't know how well you can see it but this is deep dish and this is the colorway that i got a sweaters quantity of this is Bello DK, 200 yards, Merino Cashmere. So I was carrying this around with my coffee and whatever else I had in my hands. I turned, I bumped into somebody. Typical. And spilled coffee. Not only, I don't even know if you can see it, like, all over this yarn so you know i just had to buy it <laughs> and all over the floor you guys so picture it i'm nut to butt people and this is me <laughs> i'm like i'm like oh no sorry i spilled my coffee oh no i'm, I'm sorry i spilled my coffee 
Amy comes up, who's the creative director. This is just how nice these people are. Amy comes over and she's like, did you find something? Like she's totally oblivious to the fact that I'm like hovering over the coffee that I spilled. Meanwhile, Kim from Chasing Acorns thinks she did it. I'm like, no, oh. I'm sorry if I'm flashing you. Meanwhile, Kim thinks she did it because when I turned around, she was standing there like, like I'd already spilled my coffee. And she says hi to me as I'm like standing over this puddle of coffee. So she goes to get me paper towels. What a doll. And I'm standing there. Amy goes, oh, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll stand over it for you. Like, no, I spilled it. I said, Kim went to give me paper towels. I will totally clean up my own mess. Like, what a dumbass. Like, I, I, I'm cleaning up my, my coffee mess, you know. That was that debacle. I mean, as my grandpa would say, Judas Priest, which I don't know if that's a bad word or not, but he, he never cussed any other time, but he would say that. That was... The only thing that I bought, I bought that sweaters quantity and I bought this on Saturday. Then after I finished my Flamingo flavor, I went out and, and went shopping in downtown Hastings. They have the cutest little stores. There was, it kind of looked like a pawn shop and like the front of it was set up like a pawn shop. They had jewelry and coins and stuff and then there was like this other section that had guitars and music stuff and then there was this other section that had like bows like archery bow archery bows that's for people who you know can't hear what I'm saying I'm acting it out for you and then they just had a bunch of stuff they had mattresses upstairs and furniture downstairs and I mean you know like sensory overload is or not sensory overload visual overload well I work very well in visual overloads. For me, it's like finding Waldo. I spent $1 and I found these tucked back in. What, what, are you kidding me? Like of all the things to find. I'll just hang them up on the wall cause I don't know for kids, especially gloves, are you kidding me? I have to. I don't, I was gonna say I have to love you a lot, but I don't even knit those for me, so. Oh, you guys, I almost forgot. I also got a pair of snips. Aren't they cute? I forgot, they were in the bottom of the bag. I've been meaning to put them in my notions pouch and I keep forgetting. After that, so actually I don't remember the, I don't remember the order of events, but they had a store like, a metaphysical mind body crystal store so I went and bought I don't know a handful of crystals and I got this necklace it's amethyst look at it you guys oh my god I'm in love I love crystals my birthday's in February so of course amethyst close to my heart anyway aside from the awesome healing properties it has just on your person in general I love it it makes me so happy so that was awesome. Then I went to this little thrift shop. Look how cute. It was, I mean, it's stretched on canvas, signed by the artist. It's an actual painting, it's not a print. So it's actually, uh, I, I, I hang it right above the mermaid. I just took it off the, the mer pug, excuse me. I just took it off the wall to show you guys. But isn't it cute? So the plucky pop-up had two events. Friday night was like a cocktail-y thing at their place. And then Saturday night was two movies and dinner in the ballroom at the Waldorf. I'm like, the ballroom at the Waldorf? That sounds a little too fancy for me. <laughs> in Hastings, the Waldorf is the Waldorf Brew Pub, I think. Brew, Waldorf Brew something. Oh my gosh, you guys. 
Their food is amazing. Their beer was great. Cash Bar, they had four drinks named after plucky colorways. So that was kind of cool. And they had cookies at each one of the table. Oh, they had a popcorn machine. And at each one of the tables, they had like, you know, that red and white popcorn thing with like movie candy and stuff in it. They played the Princess Bride and Young Frankenstein. It was so much fun. Dan ended up coming later and got to, you know, chat with a couple of the people. So on top of the movie night, they had a grab bag. You got swag. This bag, so it has two handles and this handle. It's canvas. I don't know if you can see that or not. I mean, it's legit, you guys. There's a pocket with snaps and stuff. There, oh, right here's there's a tag. Bagu duck bag, canvas duck bag. So it says, I guess I never read it. Well, there it says it's knitting needles and they're knitting the words. And here's Morticia, which I know is one of their colorways. I wonder if they all are. I bet it is because down here it has the pluckyknitter.com. So I bet these are their colorways. But like I said, I'm, I'm a newbie. I kept telling everyone I was a plucky virgin and they were like, oh, you're gonna love it. So a lot of people just know me as the plucky virgin. I said, next time I'll come wearing something knit out of plucky. So in the swag bag, we got this, which is, I believe the 20, yeah, 2015 pattern book. It's awesome. Okay, so this is Haley and that's Sarah. And this is Knitterella. I did not get to meet her. I don't know her real name. I just know that she's Knitterella on Instagram. I'm sorry, like somehow I missed her. But they're sisters and they talked about when Sarah started, they would dye all winter long and the yarn would, they would dye outside in the snow and the yarn would like freeze to their pants before they could get it in the dye pod. Okay, let me show you this, this pattern. Okay, you guys, and I, everyone probably knows this and I have no idea. Ice Shanty by Amy Miller. I want it. Now, don't know when, but I even have my outfit. Look how cute. She has like a plaid. It looks like jeans and a plaid shirt on underneath. Here's my outfit. I'm picturing like a long sleeve denim shirt with black leggings and some snow boots and one of these. Let's go sledding. Yeah, I, I know I'm such a dork, but it was so exciting. I had a blast. The other thing in here is a cup and it says, what's it say? Twi twill always twill, which is one of their colorways that I don't know. And then an enamel pin and it says double feature. Oh, sorry, there we go. It says double feature because they had two movies that night. Ugh. I just had a blast. It was so much fun. I'm so glad that I went. It, good people, good food, good beer, good times. I met another podcaster. Her name's Erin, uh, Knitting Envy. I think it's Knitting Envy is her podcast. I'll put it down here though, Erin. That was the plucky pop-up in a nutshell. I had an amazing time and I hope I didn't bore you guys to death listening to me talk <laughs> about it, but it seriously was a good time. And if you guys ever get a chance to go, I suggest it. I'm still not done. <laughs> this is going to be the longest episode ever. I just have so much to talk about. I just want to thank everyone who sent me awesome stuff along with the little bluebirds for Tommy. That is not at all expected, anticipated, that is completely surprising to me. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I just wanted to kind of show you guys some of the awesomeness that I've received because like you viewers are amazing. And I just want you to know that 
I super appreciate that you enjoy listening to me be a hot mess <laughs> because I know that I'm not everybody's flavor. I do notice like when people unsubscribe, like everyone once in a blue moon, I'll no notice that the number goes down. I don't typically pay much attention, but I am looking just because I'm anticipating that thousand subscriber giveaway. So once in a blue moon, I'll look and the number goes down and I always think like, oh, but then I think I am not, you know, I say shit and stuff. <laughs> so I'm not everybody's flavor. So the people who view me and get my humor and enjoy my crazy, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I try to at least heart every comment. If I didn't, it's because I've missed it. I try to reply to everything. I really am totally thankful that you guys, you know, want to spend time with me that just it it <clears throat> it really makes me um appreciate this community even more so thank you in all seriousness thank you uh that being said nobody has to send me anything but it is very appreciated and i thought i would just share how cool some of these some of our peeps the viewers are so Julia sent, Tommy, you're getting birds from Australia. That's all I'm saying. What? Julia from Australia sent this cute little bag because she knows that I love my ball sacks, right? And this is a big ball sack. She knows I love my owls. My owls. The inside looks like this as if the bag wasn't enough. She sewed it, like she sewed the bag for me. I got some tea. First off, you guys, I'm in love with Australia. It's on my bucket list. I wanna go to Glowworm Grotto. I have a friend who lives there and she uh, posted pictures of the white tree frogs humping all over the place on her back porch. And I think that I peed a little, I was so excited. First off, White's tree frogs are my all-time favorite frogs. I will try to post a picture of them. They are fat and they're fat. <laughs> I love anything fat and smushed and they are fat. And when they, they like hump, they the dude like bear hugs the, the fat girl and just like sits there for like days <laughs> they don't move and they're everywhere and it makes me so happy and I want to go to Australia and I'm sure that anyone in Australia probably hates them I mean I think they like come up through your toilets and shit but I love them and they would be like my pets so I'm super excited that I got anything from Australia Julia you rock so she sent me some loose leaf tea, which I have like steeper, like I, this is my jam. She sent me a mini, which I have hence like gotten out and played with and shown a bunch of people. A loop, I don't know you guys, but it's super soft. She sent me a little boomerang magnet and that's designed by Colin Jones who has aboriginal, aboriginal heritage, and so he designs his stuff around that. This lotion, which is lemon juniper. She's gonna be these little stitch markers with a koala, and they're my favorite kind. I mean, you guys, the key to my heart, you have no idea how hard this has been. She sent me Australian chocolate. This is Cadbury, it's a koala. It is milk chocolate with smooth flowing caramel, which was a little melty when I got it, but it's gonna taste amazing. And then this one, Chiquito, Choquito, is chewy caramel fudge, <laughs> crunchy balls. <laughs> yes, I'm 12. And loads of chocolate. So I have been waiting to eat these because I wanted to show you guys and I'm so excited that I get to now. Then Jolene sent me, this is a Scandinavian town. Isn't it, doesn't it look cute? 
So she's from there and she sent me, this is a local artist and it's a little, it's a little horse. And then she sent me this. Like duh, right? Life's always better at the campground. And Dan loved it because it's a palette. I mean, so Dan was like totally excited about it. I ordered a stitch marker from Knitty by Nature. I have wanted these, one of these forever. It is a little glass globe and it has like little blue stars in it, which I don't know if you can see that or not. So this is what I ordered. This is what I wanted. I also ordered some stitch markers for the giveaway. It's Knitty by Nature. Her name's Melissa. There's her card. There's her information. If it will focus. It probably won't. I can't see because I'm sorry. I can't see. She sent some stuff for a giveaway too. So be on the lookout for that. Then she also sent me, you guys, does she have my ticket or what? It's a little, it's a little like kit, martinis. So it has this in it, a little wood cut, it says Knitty by Nature. And then she sent me these cool things and these are in her, her shop too. Go check out her shop. She has tons of cool stitch markers. So sh there's little stars, right? And a little moon, which you know I love moons and stars and crystals and tarot and Pisces and all of those types of things. So she totally pays attention. Then, speaking of paying attention, she sent me this too. What? It's a martini. How cute is that? And then the stitch markers that come with it look like little olives. And then there's some other stitch marker. There's there's a few that are just look like these, which are also my favorite. I love them. They're the stitch markers that I use most often. So thank you, Melissa. You rock. Another thing that I bought on my own that I forgot to mention, I bought it from Molly Girl Yarns. I have never been on the enamel pin train, right? Like I don't, honestly, I did not own one until I bought this one, but now I have two because I have the double feature one from Plucky. As soon as I saw this one, I'm like, this is probably the only enamel pin that I'm ever going to buy. And those of you who know me probably already know what it is. Yes. <laughs> I mean, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, dude, like that's, I need to get it. I have to have it. I have to have it. So I got that. I forgot to mention that earlier. I'm almost done. I promise. I'm sick of hearing myself talk, just saying. And this is going to take me like three weeks to edit. So I don't know when you'll see it. <laughs> Debbie included with her birds of happiness, she crocheted me to, um, dish rags she said as soon as she saw or dish cloths i don't know what do you say dish rag or dish cloth that just came to me dish rag i wonder i bet my grandma i bet my grandma nada called it a dish rag and my grandma peg called it a dish cloth i'm probably willing to bet money on that aren't they cool she said as soon as she saw the colors she thought of me and they're super soft I mean, they're cotton. I'm used to like that sugars and cream, sugar, sugar and cream or whatever that stuff that hurts, that kind of cotton. I've never had soft cotton. Debbie, what kind of yarn is this? I might have to get me some. Okay, last thing, I promise. I mentioned earlier that Steel City Stitcher sent me this ball sack with, with the beer on it. She also, you guys, I am spoiled rotten. She also sent me this one. Okay, now, these are different sizes. Okay, so the craft beer one is her large size. This is large, and that's fitting. I have my, my knit sock, because you know, I, I already, I have a full one knit. 
And then I have my yarn ball and the sock that I'm knitting in there. So, I mean, you can fit, that's her large size. Then this mushroom one. She knows I love me some mushrooms. The mushroom one is her medium, regular. The mushroom is her regular. So large and regular. Look at the, the snaps are plastic, which I love. Sorry, the lighting's changing. Like now the sun's over there. I hope it's not too messed up. Because like I said, I'm blind and I can't see it, so. But the plastic snaps are super cool. And they're, they're little hearts on this one. Look at the little bird. Oh, you guys, I'm in love with these. And as if she didn't do enough already, here's her card. Steel City, Roberta, follow her. She has all sorts of fabric and stuff. She sent me, I got a four leaf clover stitch marker. She sent me a little pin, which I'll put on one of my ball sacks, maybe another one. And then you guys, she is from Pennsylvania and she sent me a ketchup bottle and a pickle from the Heinz place. <laughs> I love it. They're little pins. I'm going to put these on my bags too. I mean, you guys are the bestest. That's all I can say. You guys rock my world. I hope that I, I, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say. Like, I'm so thankful. My world is, aw good grief, look how bad the lighting is. My world is awesome. The people in my world are awesome. I still feel like I'm on a plucky high from how nice they were. You guys gave so many cool compliments for Mama Jean. I just, life is good and I am happy and I wish and hope and pray that your worlds are awesome. If you're in a tough spot or your world isn't awesome, I hope that maybe this little section of it can brighten your day or give you a laugh. I just want you guys to know that I am super, super thankful for you and I appreciate all your kind words and I hope that this long into it, people are still watching. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. You might even not be. I don't even know. Oh, I don't even know what time it is because my clock battery is dead. So anyway, uh, Dan is patiently waiting to make dinner because he's that sort of awesome dude. So uh, until we meet again, I love you guys. Thank you so much. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers.